There's an old Russian saying, according to Vladimir Nabokov, who should know, because after all he was an old Russian, it goes like this, the man with the longest nose sees further. I have no idea what that means either, but it sounds good, doesn't it? And that's the main thing. Welcome to Covent Garden. Welcome to the Royal Opera House. In fact, welcome backstage uh, to the Royal Opera House. This isn't, as it might appear, uh, an abandoned scaffolding warehouse that I've broken into. It is actually the side stage of Covent Garden, which at this time, on any given night of the season, is the very best place you could hope to be in London. There's an amazing atmosphere, unlike anywhere else. It's kind of half febrile, half focused, people rushing back and forth, getting ready for this. On, on this occasion, the final performance of this production of Shostakovich which is The Nose. And oh, folks, have we got something for you this evening. What we have for you this evening is the brilliant brain through of three fantastic minds working at 90-year intervals across three separate centuries. From the 19th century, there is Nikolai Gogol, the celebrated Russian literary whiz and inventor of the search engine, unless I've just misheard that or Wikipedia'd it wrong, who in 1836 wrote a short story called The Nose, in which collegiate assessor Kovalev of wakes one morning to discover that his nose is no longer on his face. And not only is his nose no longer on his face, it is in fact walking around the streets of St. Petersburg having a high old time and actually doing rather better than Kovalev is himself. The next century, the 20th century, 1926, the also brilliant, also Russian and irritatingly young composer Dmitry Shostakovich, fresh from the success of his first symphony, 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 is looking around for a text that he can set for his first opera and he was a lifelong fan of Gogol and therefore, if you'll pardon the expression, he picked the nose. He took Gogol's story of the nose, took other bits of Gogol, smashed it all together, sprinkled a bit of Dostoevsky over the top of it just to see what would happen. And in the event, what happened was he created an opera that in scope and in style and in music and in text and in every way was unlike anything that had ever been performed before. And now, 90 years after that, in the 21st century, our third brilliant mind, not a Russian, but an Australian baron, Barry Kosky, the artistic director of the Berlin Comic Opera, makes his Covent Garden debut with a production of Shostakovich's The Nose. And Barry has created a world that is by turns grotesque and surreal and dystopian, nightmarish, funny, very comic, very buffoon. He's taken all of those elements and smashed them together, Large Hadron Collider-like, to create the perfect setting for Shostakovich's adaptation of Gogol's groundbreaking short story, the nose and that is what we have for you this evening if you want to get involved this evening by the way you can using the hashtag roh knows that's available on twitter and facebook and instagram and all of the other places that could do with cheering up right now so get on those and get involved with discussing this fantastic thing barry kosky said in an interview that i read with him that people should be challenged by the opera that when they go to see the opera they shouldn't come out with their prejudices reconfirmed and everything safe and in place when you come out of the auditorium he said your main feeling should be, I could really do with a martini. Uh, so my advice to you is to put the vermouth and the gin in the fridge and the glasses in the freezer because, uh, boy, have we got something for you this evening. The scale of this piece is something else. There are 78 sung roles uh, in tonight's opera, 78, and nine spoken roles, which is a huge number. People who don't often go to the opera sometimes are surprised that there are spoken roles at all, but it's not that unusual. To have nine is something else. So to cover those 78 roles, there are 27 principals on stage at Covent Garden tonight. I'm glad it's not me having to sort out the dressing room roster. That is an astonishing number of Truly brilliant performers. It is an all-star cast. Too many to mention all of them, of course, but there are some great people on there. So John Tomlinson, Susan Bickley, Peter Bronda, Rosie Aldridge is singing tonight. Wolfgang Ablinger, Sperrhacker is singing tonight. It is a, an amazing group of people, along with the chorus themselves, a troupe of dancers, including one excellent young dancer at the centre of it, one of the highlights of the show for me. You should definitely look out for him. And the true heart of the cast, Martin Winkler, who plays, plays Kovalov, the man uh, who loses his nose and does so in a performance that is not only a brilliant piece of singing, but is also a superb piece of clowning. It's not very often that you see somebody in the opera manage to bring those two very different skills together, uh, but it is uh, an astonishing performance by Martin Winkler. And I'm very excited to say that I am lucky to be joined by one of the stars, one of the principals, one of those 27 people on the stage tonight, Ailish Tynan. How are you? I'm great. I'm not doing too bad for 103. You're not doing too bad for 103. <laughs> you look, you're looking very well on it, I have to say. Very well on it. This is it. This is the final performance. 
performance of the nose. How's it been? Is it's been amazing. I mean, I know everyone says, "Oh, this opera was great fun." This opera really was great fun. Yeah. We had an absolute ball. Everybody, right through from Barry to Ingo Metzmacher to everyone in the cast, has just been fantastic. The energy, the camaraderie, the whole thing has been great. And you've seen a few of them slipping by there, Sir John, Rosie, Martin, slipping by in the background while you were chatting away there. They're it's all getting ready to go out and. Kicks well, he butt. opens the show, doesn't he? John Tomlinson opens does, the show, in fact, yeah. as the barber in an extraordinary... Looking uh, a bit sinister with his old... <laughs> well, the whole thing is very sinister, isn't it? I mean, the, I mean, what was it like in rehearsals? Because in some parts it's extremely dark and in other parts it's yeah. wildly comic. Mad. I mean, the, yeah, the rehearsals were mad. And when I sat in on scenes that I wasn't in, that I hadn't seen... Yeah. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> People with their knickers on running around the place. And it was like being in a surreal world. But the rehearsals were very serious. And yeah. Barry was in control of everything in a wonderful way. He's so, such a brilliant director and such a nice guy that it was just a great atmosphere in the rehearsal room. But everybody really wanted to work hard because we wanted to do yeah. a really good job on this. Well, I was going to ask you about that because um, there's an awful lot of comedy here. So did he bring a sort of template and he showed you exactly how to do everything? or was there there more workshopping? Did you guys bring stuff to well, it? Well, yeah, I mean, he, he had his idea of how it should, should all be, and I think he's such a brilliant director that we were all, everyone was happy to go with that. And then within his initial capsule of an yeah. idea, we were allowed to improvise around that, and then he would say, no, maybe that's, I like that, do this instead, or, you know, add this in as well. OK, so now my so, one question is, as an amateur singer, I'm, I'm faced with a piece of Shostakovich. It's pretty hard to get your head round. Give me yeah. one tip for memorising a Shostakovich piece. <laughs> From, as an amateur yeah. singer, I tell you <laughs> what now, you need to knock back a fair few of those martinis you were talking about. <laughs> that is a, Put generally... it under your pillow, go to sleep, and in the morning you'll wake up. And... That is perfect. I will take that on board. <laughs> Thank you so much, Edge. Um, you have to go off and get changed now, I believe, into your <laughs> costume, um, as the, uh, the opera yeah. is about to begin. But thank you so much for talking <laughs> to us. Indeed, it is about to begin, I believe. Uh, we can go to the auditorium now to see uh, us uh, as we plunge into Shostakovich's The Nose, this extraordinary performance. Uh, Ingo Metzmacher, as Eilish was saying, uh, is at the baton. Uh, it is Barry Kosky's wonderful performance, wonderful uh, direction uh, of a new translation in English. I have to tell you, it's in English, which is slightly surprising sometimes at Covent Garden, but it's sung not in its original Russian, in English, in a translation that I'm duty-bound to tell you is a little on the sweary side uh, by David Pantley, but is a great, great translation. It's very funny. You never hear people, uh, audiences at Covent Garden laughing in quite the way that they laugh uh, at this. It's an hour and a half long. There is no interval. Uh, so you need to buckle up, you need to hang on to your faces because this is Shostakovich's The Nose, live from the Royal Opera House in London.
What do they stink of? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but they always stink. I shall not drink coffee at breakfast. My humor today says something different. Toast spread with some onion puree. <laughs> Bloody fool. Get around. To be honest, I would have rather liked a bit of both. But I could be frowned upon. Praskovia Osipovna does not allow such liberties. <laughs> Melts in the mouth. But what's this?
tonight when I came home I noticed a pimple on my What? What has happened? My nose! It's not there! Where has it gone? Some water and a mirror! Nothing! No nose there! Vanished and gone! Pinch me. Oh! No, still not there. Not asleep. Still no, no. I must get rest. Say you've gone. The police station! Thank <laughs> you. 
ha, ha, ha. How exactly did it disappear? It has been a work of the devil. There's something, there is something I do not understand. It was no poodle, 
but really the accountant acting for a gambling outfit who had stolen all the money. <laughs> I see, see what might happen. So it turned out. Police officer, I'm not in something and I can't even find no body part of the body part Modern medicine can work such wonders. These days it's routine for a doctor to grab a brand new nose. But come off it, I can see it's a joke. You think we're alone in idiots? Some foolish joke, then I'll have to show you. Don't go to any trouble, although I must admit I'm curious. Maybe I could have a tiny key. <gasps> Most peculiar. Quite surprising, curious. The surface where it's missing, featureless, smooth and shiny, smooth as a baby's bottom. Yes, polished like the emperor's fingernail. Well, is there enough? No more objections. It's obvious that something must be done. So I would be particularly grateful, sir, if you would now print this advertisement, and it was a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Well, it would not be much trouble publishing this notice, but I cannot imagine it will help you salvage your loss of face. <laughs> Let me advise you, what you need is a ghost writer, someone to write it up, a hack who can use a pen and who could give you some publicity as a freak of nature it could be published as a two-page spread. <laughs> as scientific knowledge. As a topic clearly of public interest. should happen to you. This will make you feel better. Take a pinch of snuff. They say it works a treat if you've a sniffle. And for many other afflictions, it can work miracles on hemorrhoids. <laughs> I'm 
ein dänischer Zeit. You could be standing as long as you like. I would just be able to make out your face, but not from your soul, your beard. They're all just a blow. I need the mother of my wife. Cannot see anything. Who is it? Who are Let me see if I can find it. Don't be impatient. I am realize that you might need it. And so I brought it along. It's very strange. I trace the beginnings of this most unusual story to a barber in Vosnesetsky. And this Jotiras is now in the hands of justice. Of justice. For a long time, I have had my eye on this dangerous crew. Only oh. now, Susie, he's told a packet of butter. That is a dangerous criminal. There is your nose just as good as in your tongue. Yes, yes, that's it. Yes. May I ask you to join me a nice hot cup of coffee? I would most gladly if I could, but I fear I have to refuse. Work becomes. I have to report to the financial court. The death of the victims of the left. Just reason by a very substantial budget. If I live with my friends, let's not spend the money of my wife, my children. My oldest son has clearly shown signs of having great talent, but I am not well off enough to pay his fees. Money, money. But I am not well off enough to pay his fees. But I am not well off enough to pay his fees. <laughs> Position. Oh, fuck it. It doesn't stick. <laughs>
handle for you. Go, quick, quick, go on. Well, push! Push! The surgery, the quack, he must come be. In here, it's most peculiar, medically quite a unique situation, really, and totally unexpected. My final lord, my savior, may the saint reward you, for this is my hour of need, my rescuer. Can you tell me clearly what happened? I woke up quite early, and I felt at once where my nose was perfectly ironed out and unbroken surface. All your other mortuary parts are in the right places. Uh, the rest has not concerned you. That is in place. Yes. All right. Keep calm. Sit down. Turn your head sideways. Oh! Nothing untoward. Mm. To the right, please. Carefully. A little more. Hold it there. Yes. Oh! No. Impossible. What? My advice is stay as you are now. If we meddle, we might make matters worse. Much worse. Sir, I beseech you, you must cure me. Of course, we could try to glue it. Well, it must I have to warn you. It may look unnatural. Take it any which way. Than it looks at the moment. 
why not leave the matter in the hands of mother nature? Clean the spot very frequently with water. And you will soon get used to your state. For a man without a nose learns to like how he is just as much as... And as for the nose, I recommend that we seal it in a jar of spirit even better than a shot of vodka. Just a spoonful mixed with the lukewarm vinegar. And with herb you'll get quite a decent price for such a famous specimen. I might be interested myself if the price was just right and not outrageous. No, no, it is not up for sale. I am not allowed it for not. I am sorry. I was only trying to help you. But it's hopeless. I can assure you at all times of my best intentions.
Take a good look, even. I think that there's a big pimple on my nose. Let us hope that you don't say that there's no pimple and that there is no nose. No, no! Nothing there! Ah, ah, ah. I can see no pimple there! No perfect! Perfect nose, perfect nose, where it belongs. Ooh, you, what do you make of that you have been in the Hallo, hallo, 
life as if nothing had happened, wearing on his face a permanent grin and his very own nose. Of course, if we take a moment to reflect, we realise how utterly far-fetched this story is. <laughs> Aside from the highly unlikely occurrence of a nose disappearing, travelling around our city of its own accord and reappearing, it's unfathomable that Kofolov would have attempted to engage the police and even the local rag in such an unsavoury affair. And we haven't even touched upon the question of how the nose ended up in a loaf of bread in the first place. <laughs> oh, fancy. Oh. But we must agree that the greatest mystery of this sorry little tale is why anybody would want to perform it as an opera. <laughs> I can't understand it. It's of no use to any of us. It's hard to know what to make of it, other than to say that if you concede a point here or there, there is some truth in it. These things do happen. Not often, I grant you. But they do happen. Thank you so much. <laughs>
So do you need that martini? I hope so. There you go. Barry Kosky's visceral, thrilling and funny production of Shostakovich's The Nose. There's conductor Ingo Metzmacher taking the stage uh, with the full cast, including my new hero, Martin Winkler. A tour de force performance at the centre of this. Brilliantly designed, the whole thing by Klaus Grunberg. The costumes by Booker Schiff as well. Superb choreography by Otto Kickler, such as you don't often see, it must be said, uh, at the opera when the ballet's not on. A really outstanding production all round, and as I say, directed by the very brilliant Barry Kosky in his Covent Garden debut. I hope we'll be seeing a lot more of him. Thank you for joining us, by the way, people of the internet, on YouTube and the Opera platform. If you've missed any of the broadcast this evening, or if you want to tell your friends about it, or if you want to watch it again, it's going to be available uh, for the next six months. Uh, online, so you can visit it and re-watch this uh, remarkable evening's entertainment. And the Royal Opera House itself will be back in cinemas within the week, in fact. Put it in your diaries. The 15th of November uh, we'll be showing Tales of Hoffman in cinemas. Uh, it's, a, it's a classic, it's a great old production of this place, a fantastical set of fables uh, with the wonderful music of Jacques Offenbach. Uh, and uh, from me, Chris Addison, and from all of us here at the Royal Opera House, Thank you so much for watching and good night.